everybody, it's Tyler here at Ontario Provincials checking in with one of my favorite teams, 4039 Makeshift Robotics. It's been an absolutely incredible season. Two event wins so far, including a double gold cling bing with their uh, Impact Award too. So congratulations, doing a lot of great stuff with Impact. So make sure you do take a look at all their awesome recycling initiatives that they're doing as well too. But 4039's robot this year is absolutely phenomenal. We've taken that full note journey all the way through of what they're doing, some cool custom work as well too, and some great things that they've uh, iterated and added on to in regards to that climb and trap score as well too. So let's learn more about Makeshift Robotics and their incredible Crescendo robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. White, let's start talking about your drive base. Your team is doing uh, some custom wheels as well, so let's run through that and just give me a general configuration of what you're doing. So this year we decided to go with Max Swerve the, from Rev but have decided to change it up slightly from what they suggest and we are using Falcon Drive motors instead of the regular Neos because they have extra torque and a higher max RPM which gives us a max speed of about 18 feet per second or five point, about 5.4 meters per second. Um, but more interestingly about our drive base is we've been running the, our own custom 3D printed wheels. They're made of 95A TPU. We made them blue of course to match the rest of our robot. And we've found that these provide, provide tremendous grip compared to the wheels that Rev provides with the modules and last much longer as well. And these are also much cheaper to make and completely recyclable as well. When we were talking earlier, uh, they're TPU wheels, but they don't have a lot of squish to them. How did you design them to be so uh, structurally sound? So uh, in the actual model itself, we added a bunch of pinholes through from the inside face towards the outside of the wheel and the slicer views those as external walls, which basically makes little struts that go towards the outside of the wheel so we can use less infill but still get the same rigidity. No, I love the thought process that's gone into that. Let's start to follow that note journey. Ben's going to talk about your uh, intake uh, that you have. So Ben, let's talk about the under the bumper intake uh, and how you're uh, funneling everything and just the overall construction of it. Yeah, so this year we decided to go for an under the bumper intake. Um, We've got two rollers, so we got sushis on the bottom there, and then on the top we're using a half-inch hex shaft uh, that has silicone floated onto it, which allows us to uh, have that front roller underneath our uh, one by two there for our drive base, which allows us to pick up the note as soon as we can, given by the rules. Uh, so I can just demonstrate that here. And then it's just nice and fast, uh, picks it up super snappy, straight into our indexer up here, uh, which is a part of our main pivot arm uh, so for that we're controlling our pivot via a um, sprocketing chain here um, and then we're using uh, springs as a counterbalance um, and that allows us to keep the whole system compact rather than using a sector gear um, so it's a lot cleaner there um, and also gives us more room to add any extras that we might need to in the future um, and then coming up to our indexer, uh, we've got Lexan on the bottom with some Teflon tape on it. Um, three rollers that bring it up to our shooter, which uh, our shooter is very similar to what you might see uh, maybe from teams like 4481 uh, with a chamfer system. So we've got um, our two front rollers, which have, uh, I think, 13 orange stealth wheels on each uh, roller. So. Uh, the primary reason for that was actually because uh, we didn't quite have time to find a lighter solution. Uh, but it seems to be working out for us and our arm is still uh, very fast and we're quite happy with it. Um, and then for our amp system, uh, we just run our top roller in reverse, which allows uh, the indexer to feed it up and then back redirected out the front here. And uh, this top roller um, allows it to get sent more downwards into the amp. Can we see what an amp shot looks like? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we're going to have to catch the note because it's uh, quite fast. 
All right, well, how about quick? Uh, I think, you know, make sure this year, your cycles are just so fast that you've gone through ever. When you're analyzing the game, like thinking about like center of gravity, things like that as well too, what considerations did you make in regards to like designing your, uh, your uh, arm structure in order to make sure you're able to score as fast as you are? Yeah, so we try to keep things super simple. Uh, we have one degree of freedom, and we found the opportunity to combine the amping and the scoring, or the speaker, into the same system. So, of course, we took that opportunity, uh, and I think it's actually worked out quite well for us. Something we really got to cover on here, uh, I know when we talked about our forecast for it that we really wanted to see out of makeshift was climbs and trap scores as well too. And that's something that your team is now implementing uh, uh, at a greater scale as well too. So let's talk about uh, what your team has done because there's some cool things in regards to both how you're opening up the trap door and then also balancing as well too. Uh, so Jessica, talk, talk to me about what you have, how it's been working out, and if we can see a demo of it too. Sure, so um, on the top we have our trap scoring and our climber system. Our climber is uh, powered by a winch, powered by a Neo. Um, it basically, it winches in a rope which breaks away these little 3D printed pins so that we can climb. Um, and then as for the trap scoring mechanism, um, we have a servo down here which is holding this string in place and when we actuate the servo, um, the pin moves out which causes the constant force spring on the trap flap to shoot outwards and so this trap actuator will actually push the trap flap backwards so that we can uh, score a note in effectively. And also, uh, the new thing we added actually recently at this event are these two pieces of wood here, um, which we're using as um, a way to balance our robot when we're climbing because we noticed we had a little bit of swinging. By the way, I love top tier robots that use wood on their robot as well too, so super cool that uh, you've implemented that as well too. Uh, can we see that deployed and what that looks like? Sure. You want to winch the climber, and this will break the breakaway pins. Uh, I don't know if we can do that. Can we? Sure. There we go. So that's how the climber works, and then we can do our trap flap. So you can focus in on the actuators. There we go. And so these flaps up out here, these flaps out here are what push the flat the trap backwards, so that we can score. Overall design is such is so fantastic with this team. Just everything is very well thought out uh, with makeshift robotics. So congratulations on a fantastic robot. There's a lot of great things as well too that we got to talk about in regards to uh, note detection uh, and also how you're localizing on the field. So let's pass it back to Wyatt. Let's run through uh, some of your different programming features. All right. So I guess starting off with the note detection, we are running an Ardu cam on a with a Raspberry Pi. So on the front of our robot here in our carbon fiber printed mount, we have a small camera, and this cable leads all the way back here into our our Raspberry Pi, we're running a Pi 4B. Uh, so if we, if you want to point over there, if we have a note in front of our robot, you can see that it is tracking where the note is. And based on that, we can tell our robot to turn left or right so that we line up perfectly with the note. In auto, actually, we're using the whether it's detected or not to see if a game piece is there on the center line. And if it's not where we expect it to be, we move on and try to find the next game piece rather than sitting there idly or doing an extra path that we don't actually need. Moving on from our note detection, we also are running two Limelight 3s with our fancy little Pit Viper sunglasses. Those are on our Blue Alliance page, for only for Limelight 3s. Um, we are using these for running Photon Vision for April tag detection around the field for full field localization, so we know exactly where we are, where we are at most times. We are using that to automatically aim our robot and our shooter at the speaker so that we can always hit our shots. We found that it's quite accurate and has been working quite well for us. Well, Makeshift sure Robotics, congratulations on a phenomenal season so far. As we're filming this, looking great in your division as well too, so we can't wait to see what the, can't wait to see what the results are, but looking forward to everything your team does. And thanks a lot for being a great inspiration to the uh, first community as well too, and good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.